Hi, I'm T.H. Colhane for Solar Cities at Grace Village in Tamara Echo Village in Portugal. And I'm here with Monica. And your last name is? Olivet. Olivet, like all the world. Yeah. So you mean all the world to <laughs> yeah, everybody. Here. Right. And this is, goes out to all the world. So this is good. What we're doing here is Tamara's first deployment of a biogas system. Formerly, they've been used extensively in the solar test field, but now it's going out into the community. Yes. And this is your stove. Now, this is a propane stove. And these two burners are still running on propane coming out this white cable here. And you might want to come closer to get this. Um, what we've done is we have taken this part of it, where the central burner is. Yay. What you can see is we've taken this garden hose and we're going into the pipe that we cut from here. So we never want to use this because that would let propane, which is under pressure, into the air. So this stays closed and then there's no problem. So we've bypassed this. This copper pipe, you can see a section of it over here in the window. We just cut that pipe off and put the hose directly on here. Okay, so that's so this is dedicated now to biogas. These still are running off of the propane line which is coming here and spreading as long as this is not used. Okay, so that's the first thing. And now this has a flame distributor there and that there. And what you do is the hose, as you can see, is going up into this valve. So the valve is now closed. If you go ahead and open that valve, now you got gas coming through. Oui. And there you go. Fantastic. And that will, of course, and close regulate. It well, close it to where you want it. Okay. So you can reduce the flame or you can open it all the way up and get a nice big Great. flame. So I put it back, I yeah. close it. If you close it, then of course Great. out it goes. Great. So that's your gas holder. And this is on some nails. We could put some uh, screws or something mm -hmm. to fix it, maybe even a little better yeah, than that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's your, your gas. So let's look out where this goes so you can yeah. see. So the hose is going out. There's some way here to separate if you needed to. If you wanted to take the stove out, you mm -hmm. could just do it from there. And that's a piece of black irrigation hose connecting garden hose, okay? And that way you don't have to pull it from here. It makes yeah. it easier to okay. service the stove and do whatever you want to do on that, okay? As we go out and come around, we see that this is your garden hose with the biogas. This is your propane. Propane is going to the bottle here which is left on, and this is the on position with this yeah. valve there, okay? So you've got your propane, you've got your biogas. The biogas line runs down along the wall. Again, we've put a separator here. If you needed to drain water that might accumulate, mm -hmm. also from here, you might have to unplug it yeah. like that and then back. plug it Great. back in. So you have that, and you can lengthen it if you need to. Yeah. Okay, that's your irrigation hose. You keep coming along. You see once again a join here, see the irrigation hose, mm -hmm. and then the irrigation hose is going up through this valve. So this valve here with the red handle, a little closer, this is also a way that you could isolate it from the kitchen. You'd turn it off now, no gas can get to the kitchen from here if you were worried about you were working on the stove or yep. something. So you have that valve for that. This pipe here goes to the biodigester. And as you can see here, there's a valve up here. Mm -hmm. So if you needed to, you could close off the yep. biodigester from there. But we leave that normally open. And that is feeding through here. It's feeding to the stove, but the stove is closed. So it's coming back up this elbow and down through here, up through here, and into the gas holder tank, which is made of an IBC turned at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle. This is the drain valve of a typical IBC, just like this valve here. That's the normal drain valve. This is the same yeah. thing rotated up. This is if we took this IBC one like that. So this is floating in water. There's water up to here, and you'll have to top that off occasionally. It actually went down, so we should top it up to there. And uh, this is normally kept open. If you wanted to isolate this, again, you could close this valve, yeah. and now the gas can't escape, but you can't fill it either. So this is normally kept open, and that's open, yeah. and then it fills. Everything. 
you will probably find that there will be water accumulating in here and you'll try to turn on the stove and you won't get any gas pressure. And it could be that this has a little water, so in that case, you just unplug it here, let it drain out, and then yeah. plug it back in. You should be able to see the water also. You can open it from either side, okay? And that's why this loop is tied here. So this is always the lowest point, so you can see the water in there. And then this can continue to rise and fall because we have some slack here and it fills up like that and then it goes down. Just coming around so you can see there are weights here if you needed them. We found you don't need them. The sandbags are not necessary, but they're there. Um, don't know why we, we needed to test it, but now it seems like the weight of this board is enough mm -hmm. to push it down. You saw the nice flight flame you had. Occasionally, if you come on over, the lid to the IBC occasionally might get mm -hmm. stuck a little bit then you want to mm -hmm. go like that so that it can float. Where the hole is in this, this is an intact IBC that was removed from its cage. There is a hole, I think it's right over here, on the top, so it's not damaged. We could still use this IBC to make a biodigester later. We didn't cut any holes anywhere, okay. just one big one in the top, as if I made one here, yeah. but on the other, down the bottom there. That's what's filling with water as it goes down. So it's a nice thing for those of you who are trying this at home. You don't have to damage your IBC. This one you cut the top off of, of course, so that you can fit it in. But this one, you just make a two inch or three inch hole down on the what was the roof of the tank down at the bottom to let the water in. And it seems to work perfectly well. And then we've got these guide poles. These are really nice in a way. They're a lot easier to do than the Arty India uh, cylindrical water tanks because it comes already with a cage which makes it really easy to put attachment points to put your poles and you only need two, one on either uh, end of the diagonal and let it ride up and down with this mm -hmm. board. So it's a pretty elegant system that we've invented here at the Experimental Week funded by Lush Cosmetics. Thank you very much and thank you Ruth Andrade and Paula Millette for your hard work with Lush in the biogas field. And so this is a, this is a game changer. I think everybody anywhere can get IBCs, even used ones that had their tops cut off, and then another one, pop it in. And then this one here, of course, is really nice because it has, has light straw construction, mud, straw, and lime uh, from the local mud here in Tamara. And then we have a lime and sand uh, cover to waterproof it for the rain. And again, like all of our digesters, it's just three pipes. A feeding pipe going down to the bottom with a cut at the bottom to let the food in. A gas pipe coming out of the lid. And then a overflow pipe with a T. And here's where we have our temperature probes with ambient temperature here. This is the DSB8, the DS18B20 one wire temperature probe. And there's two others, one at the bottom of the tank and one at the top of the tank. And uh, yeah, we're testing how it's holding its temperature. Seems to be holding it well. The trick now is getting it hot. Um, so uh, this is our experiment, and we hope you will try this at home. Thank you.